Hello. I've been uh, reading all these uh, Muriel Spark novels in this uh, volume of uh, four of her great novels. The Prime of Miss Jean Brody, The Girls of Slender Means, The Driver's Seat, and The Only Problem. And uh, I finished them. The last is the uh, Prime of Miss Jean Brody, which is the first in this volume, but which I saved to read last. So, uh, Prime of Miss Jean Brody was a uh, was I guess probably the, what he, she made a lot of money out of uh, since it was sold to the movies, became a very big hit. Movie. Well, first to a play, was made into a play and then made into a movie that was very successful uh, like 54 years ago. I uh, saw the movie when it came out um, and uh, it had a hit song with it. So low, you can touch them. So, come out to the meadow, Jean. you're young and alive. Come out of your half. The sheep in the valley come home my way To the stars all around me find me alone The sun comes up singing I'll be waiting for Jesus Jean uh, by Oliver, which was a hit recording, believe it or not, on, on the radio. And, uh, and uh, Maggie Smith got an Oscar for it, and it had uh, very attractive young actresses in it, um, one of which uh, particularly, uh, I particularly liked. But uh, so that was um, the prime of Miss Jean Brody, and I saw it when it you know, first came out uh, all those years ago. So that was really my first exposure to um, anything by Muriel Spark. So now that I've gotten into reading the books of, of hers, I'm, uh, I love her more than, more than ever before. Uh, her, her novels are, these, these anyway, are very short but very packed with stuff. I mean, I don't know how she, how she does it. There's so many ideas and so many uh, lucid, uh, real characters and um, in, in just a short 
while. I guess she just doesn't waste any time on, on this and that. I don't know how what her process was, but uh, whatever it was, it, it really worked. Um, Prime Miss Jean Brody is about a school teacher who is, well, a fascist, basically. Uh, and uh, ultimately, she gets exposed for that. And they, they've been wanting to kick her out of the school anyway because of her methods that are unconventional. She um, has, a, has a group of, of uh, girls, uh, her, her girls, you know, uh, there's like six specific girls in her class that she picks out and uh, becomes her girls and she's really going to uh, train them to be what she, you know, give me the girls whatever at a certain age and they're mine for life and so that's kind of her, her uh, method here and so, you know, we meet the girls, many of the girls, particularly Sandy, uh, and um, it jumps back and forth. It, we hear early on what happens to uh, uh, Jean Brody later um, and we hear uh, how everything goes on, but we, you know, we go back to the early times. This is in the 30s, so um, so it, it, the the fascist element in the, in the 30s is quite interesting because uh, you know it starts in 1931, and uh, she's all enamored with. Uh, she's very much uh, into classical uh, stuff like uh, paintings. So she likes, loves Italy. So she goes to Italy and, uh, you know, on vacations <clears throat> and comes back. And um, so she's very much into the paintings of it, from Italy and uh, that kind of classical art. And uh, she um, also becomes enamored with other things with the culture that are going on right then which is you know this is the the depression so everything's there in, in uh, uh, Glasgow Edinburgh they're in Scotland and uh, think I think they're in Edinburgh anyway they're in Scotland and things are not you know great it's the it's the depression and she comes back from uh, Italy and says, well, you know, Mussolini is a great man. He's, uh, you know, ended unemployment and, uh, you know, everybody, uh, the trains run on time that we've always heard and, and everyone's, you know, kind of disciplined and, and she, she loves, uh, the, you know, the, the uh, black shirts and all lined up and, uh, you know, uh, has photos of them with uh, whatever sort of a fascist salute they did. Um, back then so she she uh, you know that that's part of what she's doing but uh, otherwise she's she's uh, uh, the, the thing is she's she's basically uh, kind of she's not married and she's uh, in her prime she always talks about being in her prime which which you know indicates that she's afraid of losing her prime and afraid of being out of her prime and afraid of people not seeing her in her prime but uh, she completely keeps talking about being in her prime and uh, and you know ultimately as the girls age uh, you know she's with with the girls they go on the other classes but she's still connected to them when they're in their uh, teens, uh, 16, 17, before they leave the school. So she, she uh, can't, she doesn't keep the, uh, keep that wall between herself and, and the children. She wants to breach that, that connection. She's not, she she wants to to control control them in a way, but then she also needs them to confide in and and tell about what she's going what's going on with her life, and what's going on is there's two male teachers. There's the the art teacher who has lost his arm, uh, his left arm in uh, the first war, and uh, then there's the the music teacher and. And she also has a a, uh, a lover named Hugh, who uh, in the past who is not in the picture and gone, and uh, I don't think he was lost in the war or whatever went on with him. But he's he's gone, so she sort of has her heart 
uh, uh, with to that to that guy. She's very romantic in this sort of way, um, and she. Uh, but then it becomes a, a, a thing where she's kind of going between these two teachers. Um, the art teacher is is uh, Catholic and and married, so uh, and has several children. So she comes becomes in love with him, uh, but she can't have him because he's married. Uh, and the, and the music teacher. She um, doesn't uh, go for him either. Uh, you know, she she ends up sleeping with him and staying with him and uh, working and uh, making his meals, all that kind of wifely sorts of stuff. But she will not commit. She she will not commit to this uh, relationship. She will not marry him. Um, and so there's a, a real holding back with her that uh, she's in her prime, but she's she's holding back. She won't she won't commit to this this other this relationship. Um, and uh, you know it's it's uh, it's a little sad in a way. Um, the, the the fascist thing. It, it you know she's not you know she doesn't really come off as a bad person because you know it's it's. This is before the war and in the chaos of the depression and so forth. They, uh, one can sort of see how someone is going to be able to go for these, as as capitalism is is uh, having a fit uh, globally. Uh, you can see, or I can see, how people are going to be able to be uh, vulnerable to these um, uh, totalitarian. Uh, solutions, where whether as uh, being a communist uh, as the Soviet Union or uh, going into this this fascist thing. Well, she's so in love with Italy, so naturally she's she goes for the uh, the fascism. Ultimately, she does go to to Germany and and uh, thinks Hitler is a great man too. But uh, so you know, as things get closer to the war, it gets a little bit more precarious with all that. But the school keeps wanting to get rid of her, and um, and you know using the the kind of uh, uh, evidence of her uh, of her uh, immorality with uh, with these uh, teachers. Uh, but um, anyway, it, it all resolves in a in a, a beautiful way, and it's a, a really lovely novel uh, and well done movie too. Oh, there was also a, a, a TV series. Uh, of uh, seven uh, seven hours that uh, I've never seen, but uh, so there's there's that too. Um, so you know she didn't make a lot of money out of this one particular really famous uh, project, which is you know something every every writer should uh, should get because it keeps everything else going after that. I would imagine so. Um, yeah, Muriel Spark. Uh, I've spent you know this uh, this time here with her, uh, and and all these novels are quite a bit different. They're, she's not a one one note uh, person, one tune uh, writer at all. They're all different. They're all uh, marvelous in their own particular way, and all so well done and so rich. Uh, I, I'm just uh, I'm, I'm very uh, happy that I uh, ran into uh, <laughs> the reason I started reading them at all was that I was I looked up on the uh, web for um, um, nihilistic novels. I was feel really in the mood, and I was I should read a novel of a uh, nihilist. So. Uh, and uh, the driver's seat popped up, so that's how I got into this, and that's how I uh, ended up reading all these uh, great novels. And there, there will be more somewhere down the line. But um, yeah, and this is a case where where they did make a really decent uh, movie of of the book, and uh, you know, so I. Highly recommend seeing the movie if you haven't seen it, um, and uh, reading her novels if you uh, have the time and inclination. So.
Thank you for watching, and uh, we'll see what we're up to next, okay?